All right, how's it going? My name is Brian Long, and today we're going to talk about integer programming in JavaScript. So before we begin, let's just go over a quick agenda. First, we're going to talk about formulating the actual problem. What are we trying to solve here? Second, we're going to talk about the main algorithm that we're going to use today to solve this problem, which is the branch and bound algorithm. And then we're also going to talk about a helper algorithm called the simplex method, which is going to be used within the actual branch and bound algorithm. And then third, we're going to talk about how we actually calculate player values that uh, we are basically using within this main algorithm to solve uh, a problem. So how does all this stuff work together? So the branch and bound algorithm is our main method for solving integer programs. The simplex method, as I mentioned earlier, is merely a helper function that is actually being uh, called within the branch and bound algorithm. And we use these two methods together to find a, in our case, maximum solution to a formulated problem that we set up. Um, so basically, uh, as we saw yesterday, the problem that we're trying to solve is um, optimizing a DraftKings lineup based on some value that we give each player uh, considering some set of constraints. So in our case, the uh, one constraint is the salary cannot be uh, more than $50,000 uh, for all the players. We can pick exactly six players, no more and no less. And a player is either chosen or they are not, meaning we cannot have half of one player and half of another player to combine together to make some you know, far and away better uh, actual solution. So that is how everything works, and that's uh, the problem. So here is the goal. So how we set up the problem um, is that we are picking six players out of a possible, let's call it 125, that are in a field for any given tournament. So you can see here we have, we have a total salary um, that is indeed less than 50,000 total, and we have a total z-score, which is the sum of all these individual z-scores for each of the players in the lineup, and that is indeed the maximum for any possible uh, field of, uh, or combination of players in the field. So, formulating the problem. Given a field of players with costs and values, choose n players with the highest total of values whose salaries do not exceed a given uh, maximum or cap. And we can write this as follows, where we have the objective function here, and then we have all these constraints where, um, you know, we're going to consider them as we solve the problem. Um, so let's get into the actual branch and bound algorithm. So the logic behind it, this is that for each player, either, either add the player to the lineup or do not. And then we continue doing this until we find a valid lineup. And what we're going to do as we go through each iteration is compare a current valid lineup to our current best lineup. So we can see an example of this branch and bound algorithm here. It's, it's fairly straightforward to implement in that, like I said earlier, we're either adding a player to the lineup or we are not. And then we are recalling the function with each of those options. So what we're doing here is uh, basically making the new lineup that we're going to return. We're checking um, if this lineup is still valid. If so, we're going to return it. Um, if not, we're done with this, I guess, root of uh, the tree of decisions that we are, are dealing with. Um, and you can see here we're actually using a simplexer helper function, which, as I mentioned earlier, is the simplex algorithm. Um, and we will get into how that simplex algorithm actually works. Um, so the issue with using just branch and bound is that for large inputs, this approach is not feasible and that it is o, big O of 2 to the n, which is exponential time. And obviously, uh, this becomes almost too large for us to solve uh, very quickly with uh, not really that big of, of input sizes. So with, with n equals 50, you can see we have like 1.2 times 10 to the 30th possible combinations of lineups, you know, throw out, I guess, some of the constraints that we can cross lineups for um, as we go. But yeah, you get the point. Um, so branch and bound continue as we discussed. How do we improve it? Well, we're going to use a simplex helper function that instead of saying a player is either a 0 or a 1, well, let's say the player is either between 0 and 1, meaning that we can have a decimal amount of some player. Now, what this does for us is it allows us to use the simplex method um, 
And yeah, we'll get into how that works here. So what exactly is the simplex method and why are we using it? Well, it's a clever search technique to solve linear programs and it was listed as one of the top 10 algorithms of the 20th century. So it has power and it is very widely regarded uh, as so. So we solve linear programs in two phases. Basically, phase one is we find an initial solution. It may not be the best, but it is a solution. And then phase two, we apply the simplex method over and over again on this solution until we, we, we basically run into the optimal solution. Um, so the way the simplex algorithm works is that uh, we implement pivot operations on a matrix um, until an optimal solution is found. And basically, the matrix is the, uh, the function that we, we assembled earlier, which is right here, you can see. We have our objective function and constraints, and we can turn that into an actual matrix where we can do mathematical operations on. So let's go over a pivot operation here. So consider a system of equations in matrix form where row one is the objective function, the function we are trying to maximize, and rows two and three are the constraints. Well, we're going to manipulate these equations by selecting a number to pivot on. As you can see here, we've selected this two in x1, row two, to actually perform these pivots on. So let's actually do the pivot. Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to multiply row 2 by negative 1 and then add it to row 1 to turn this value into 0 here. So you can see as we go across the line, we're manipulating row 1 here. And then we're going to do the same thing for row 3 to make this into a 0 and then everything else is adjusted accordingly so that our end result is a column of just a single one, everything else is zeros. And we are going to repeat this operation until everything in the objective, objective function is less than or equal to zero, at which case we know we have found an optimal solution. So awesome. It's, it's relatively straightforward to, to solve a, uh, a problem in, with the simplex method once we have it set up into the appropriate form. So now what? We need to make use of this in our actual branch and bound algorithm. So how do we do that? So at each decision node is the relaxed solution's optimal value plus the current lineup's value better than our current best global solution? Well, if it isn't, we know we don't need to explore this branch any further because the actual integer solution is going to be no better than the actual relaxed solution to, the, uh, to that problem. So we can stop searching there and we continue on in our recursive calls. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how we actually define player value, meaning the, the value we give in, in the objective function. So we can say that players earn points for being better than the field in a, cer a certain statistic. And these points we turn into the values that uh, each of the players have. So how do we assign these points? Well, we're going to do this using something called z-score normalization. So what is a z-score? A z-score is the number of standard deviations a point is above or below the mean. And why do we use this? Well, this allows us to convert stats of different units into one comparable form. So for example, if uh, you want to pick somebody that's a great uh, driver, that's measured in a unit of yards. Whereas if you want to pick someone that's a a very good golfer in terms of their score, well, that is obviously measured in strokes. And you want to be, they're not the same unit, basically. So we can boil those down into one common uh, unit f using z-scores, basically. And uh, so how do we find these z-scores? Well, for a given stat, we need to first find the mean. And then once we found the mean, find the standard deviation. And then we calculate the z-score, uh, basically it is the current point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and we can build our values for each individual player. So looking ahead, um, I think there is a, a large room for improvement in how we are actually uh, assigning values to each player. Um, the goal of this project was more or less to actually build a uh, optimal solver, where not so much to you know, solve the problem of uh, statistical analysis and, you know, whatever that may be. Um, and then also, JavaScript is not a great language for precise mathematical calculations. I found uh, on several occasions when I was doing uh, row reductions that calculations that should have turned out to zero were not doing so because JavaScript just wasn't 
precise enough uh, with their digits. So I would like to rewrite the actual simplex algor algorithm using something like Python. Um, but yeah, that's really it. So thanks for listening.